So if you just got your visa, whether student visa, skilled worker visa, dependent visa, or you probably have plans of moving to the UK very soon, this video is actually meant for you. Don't skip this video. So it is a fact that so many people come into their country clueless on what to do next. Obviously, you have a lot of things to accomplish in a particular time with limited time that is allotted to you. Honestly speaking, and it's happened to me. So do not worry, I'm going to tell you the most important things for you to do immediately you step your foot into the country. These are the things that are going to help you to, you know, get yourself acquainted with the environment and get yourself settled. And it's going to help you settle down very, very fast. Whatever I'm going to tell you are the preliminary things you should do immediately you come into the country on arrival. It's just like you graduating from A to B. And if you don't graduate from A, moving to B and the subsequent ones are going to be a hell of task. Hi guys, my name is Michael Osuji. I'm a Nigerian YouTuber who is based here at United Kingdom, currently on my master's degree program. Alright, so please do consider subscribing to the channel, give it a thumbs up, drop down a comment and endeavor to share the video to anyone, any of your friends, any family member uh, that you think that might benefit from the content of this video. So let's get right into the video. So the first on my list here on the things you should do immediately you get yourself into the country is to get a UK SIM card. This, is, this can sound so underrated, but it is very, very important to have a UK SIM card because all of the applications you are going to make Whatever thing you want to do within the country in United Kingdom, you must definitely have UK SIM card. Immigration has made it so simple that even uh, from Nigeria at the TLS contact, you will be given a SIM card and it's free of charge. For students who come into the country, if you meet your school, if you go to your school reception, they can possibly give you a SIM card because buying from the airport is quite expensive. So the second thing on my list is sorting out your accommodation. Now, I will tell you this, whether you want to sort it out temporarily or permanently, it is very, very necessary for you to do so. What do I mean by temporary accommodation? Maybe you're trying to get an Airbnb or you have a friend or family member you want to stay with for the meantime while you move into your own apartment. They are all necessary. Believe me, you wouldn't want to come into the country with your luggages and you don't have a place to lay your head. That is, that would be the worst experience you ever get, you know. If you have someone to book a hotel for you so they can move from the airport straight to the hotel while you now plan yourself to move into your permanent accommodation. All right. But having a permanent accommodation is something you can actually do even while you are still in Nigeria because I myself, I did it. I was speaking to my agent, my house agent, two months before I moved into the country. So I, I, I did everything, all the uh, contract applications and, you know, paperwork through email. Right, we concluded everything online before I could move into the country. So it was quite easy for me to move in two days or three days. Uh, I stayed in the hotel before I got to the accommodation. So it's very, very necessary. And it's very, very simple for you to do so. There are so many other applications and websites where you can go and search, you know, right move, Zopla, Spare Room, so many other applications and websites where you can actually move into and then make your research, get accommodation before you move into this place. Having a permanent home address is very, very essential for your subsequent applications. Try to sort out accommodation, whether temporary or permanent accommodation, even before you move into the country. It is very, very important. It cannot be overemphasized. So the third thing on my list is getting your BRP card, your biometric resident permit. This is under identification you have in the country, right? If you check very well in your visa, your, the visa vignette, that stamp, the sticker that is in your passport that shows your visa it expires three months most of the time three months after the issuance yeah if they issued it in, in, in january that means march or april is expiring you cannot be able to travel with it again so coming to the country and then getting your brp card means you are living here legitimately the address for the collection is found at that brp letter that comes with your visa i was able to get my brp card the particular day i landed I landed in Manchester Airport. I was able to take a train down to Wrexham to my school where I was able to collect my BRP card and I was able to collect my student card. For students coming in, make sure you get your student card as soon as possible because student cards helps to pave way for you in so many things, even while shopping and 
you know shopping some of the supermarkets give student discounts and if you don't have your student card you'll not be able to enjoy that form of privilege so the fourth thing on my list here is applying for your ni that is national insurance number so this number is very very important it's another form of identification for you here in the united kingdom after your brp because obviously your your visa expires within a few months that you cannot travel out of the country again with it but your brp you can be able to leave the country and then come in again so having your ni is very much essential because no two person have a particular ni a particular ni number to a particular person so if you want to apply for jobs most employers they demand for the ni number so immediately you get your brp make sure you are applying for your ni that particular day because the faster you do so the sooner you get the letter you can do that at the comfort of your house you don't need to walk into any office just go to your website go to the ukvi website apply for your ni you get the email the reference number and they process it so the fifth thing to do on my list immediately you come into the country is to open a bank account because everything you do in the country revolves around your bank your atm card i wonder how you'll be able to pay for taxi pay for train do your grocery shopping you know buy things online without having a bank account because obviously nobody wants to carry cash around you barely see physical cash that is just the obvious truth all right i could remember what what happened to me when i wanted to pay for this house i had pounds in cash i changed some naira to pounds while living in the country so i called the agents i needed to make the payment so i could move into my apartment uh they sent me the account number i told her that i have physical cash she was like no that no, she cannot take physical cash from me that i should go into the bank and pay it in you know then i did not have any bank account so what i had to do was to walk into the bank the account number that she gave me i wanted to pay the cash into that bank account just like how we do in nigeria you can just go and pay in you know you know without even owing an account with the bank you can just go in and pay in money i went there the bank told me that i cannot pay in money to that account unless unless i have an account with them that means they have to transfer the money from my account to a different account not paying cash to an account when you don't when you're not a customer to that bank so that's how to propel me to open a, an account with them so i could now pay the money into my own account and then transfer the money from my account to the agent's account so it's just the fact that you cannot carry cash around not that you are banned from carrying cash but uh, obviously you wouldn't want to be carrying cash so they have made it so simple that you can just open an account at the comfort of your house without walking to any building at all maybe account like revolut bank monzo so many of them but i bank with revolut so at, at the description i'm going to drop a link to revolut bank where you can just click and open accounts at the comfort of your house without moving into any building without going to any conventional bank to have any application done so the revolut bank they do everything that every other conventional bank will do they send you your card at home with no bill with no payment with no charge you do your bank transfer if you if you've gotten a work they can still pay you through the bank no charge attached all right so this is one of the essential things you should do once you step your foot into the country make sure you open a bank account you might possibly be stranded if you don't have a bank account because you cannot be able to pilot your ways without having a bank account and atm card so the sixth thing to do immediately you get your foot into the country is to register with your gp we'll refer to them as our family doctor right so here you register with your gp general practice this is a place you run to in case you feel ill in case your family member is feeling sick for families that come in with kids you know kids and their carelessness they can just be playing around and they get themselves wounded they might eat and get choked so this is a place you run to and get medical help to save their life what do you need to register with your gp you just need your permanent home address you need your brp card and your passports i don't mean your uh, your passport photograph i mean your international passport okay so these are the things you need and how do you find out a jeep that is close to you you have to go to your google map as long as you have your permanent home address very close to you click on the google map type gp close to me and it's going to show you a lot of gps that are around go to the one that is close by get registered the process of the registration takes maybe two to three weeks for them to give you feedback the letter will contain your nhs number that's national health insurance number all right so these are the things you have to do getting your gp is very very necessary because you wouldn't want to fall sick 
and then not get attended to. So the seventh thing on my list is to get your kids registered in school. Yeah, obviously nobody wants their kids to stay out of school for a long time, you know, moving from their individual countries, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Ghana, whichever country you're coming from, you wouldn't want your kids to be in UK and not get registered with, with school. And this is not like, it's not like a very difficult task to, to pull through. Uh, all you have to do is just to ring them on phone. You must not go there physically to see the school. You might just do your research, find school that is very close to your apartment or to your house or to city center where you live. Ring them on phone. They will just request for some information from you, birth certificates, BRP, passport and all of that. And then they will get your kids registered. Every other information that you might need from them will commence from there. All right. So make sure you register your kids for their school and let them start their education. Okay, which is very, very necessary. They wouldn't want to stay out of school for a long time. So the last on my list is get a job. Start applying for a job. Apply for a job rigorously, aggressively. Keep applying. Make sure you keep applying. There are so many ways you can apply for a job. You can go to all these job sites, reads.com, total jobs, you know, uh, CV library. So many of them you can always lay your hands on. Make sure you keep applying for jobs. For the record, to be honest with you, getting a job is not such an easy task. People who have lived here will tell you the truth that getting a job is not such an easy task to pull through. You will get a lot of rejections. You will get a lot of demoralizing comments. You get a lot of, you know, um, losing focus and all of that because it doesn't just come so easily. And you know the process of you requesting for your NI and how long it will take for the NI to come out, maybe two to three weeks. That means obviously for two to three weeks, you might not even have anything to do. You have to always live on the money you came in with and the foodstuffs you came in with from the country, from your own individual country, right? So the moment you start applying for jobs, as long as you have your NI and other documents needed, just keep applying. Mind you, getting a job is not so easy, but it's not something that is not achievable. So keep applying for jobs. That is the last on my list. All right. So if you think that this video has been so helpful, please, I'm begging you, just give it a thumbs up. Endeavor to share this video to anyone that you think that is making plans of leaving the country, that you think that just arrived, or you think that is having this plan for future purposes, you know, to leave the country to the UK.